The whole point of the ENGA is to do as many questions as you can in like as quickly as possible. Right. I don't think you're expected to finish everything. Sure. But the questions themselves are quite easy. So you can probably do, you know, one question every like minute. I remember being very, very stressed with the ENGA because I did the like the practice papers and I got like 30% every time. Oh, no. And that that is a really stressful thing when it's like a week before the exam. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it's, it's the, the rate at which you have to think, I think, is what I remember. Um, and I'm not a particularly quick thinker. So this is like, a, this is probably the most challenging part of the application process for me. <laughs> the anger was a lot of multiple choice questions. And my memory of sitting there was, I just had to decide, I, could I do this, could I not, and then, if I could do this, would I be able to do it quickly or not? Yeah. And so I'd start the paper, I'd do the questions that I thought I could do quickly first. After I'd done all of those, I'd then start looking back again to see ones that I could do, but not in time. By that time, time had run out already. So I answered as many as I could. Yeah, so um, when I did it, I think it was a bit longer than it currently is. But I think if you've done a little bit of anger practice, it's incredibly fast paced. Um, you shouldn't expect to finish any of the questions, well, all of the questions. You should finish. You should expect to, finish, to use some of them, I suppose. Um, but maybe sort of aiming for 70, 80% of the questions in, I think, section A would be sort of, you know, a decent way to go. Um, I think it's also worth stressing that colleges use, use the ENGA scores in different ways. So I know some DOSes, they think, you know, ENGA has sort of grade priority, whereas others um, may only use results from a particular section um, or something they don't really care about at all and put more emphasis on um, say the interview. You know, it was very quick paced, so you need to answer like a lot of questions um, like very quickly. And uh, I think it has two sections. Yeah. Um, do you want to talk about the two sections? Or uh, okay, yeah, yeah. Answers? Yeah, sure. Um, so I remember that the first section was like multiple choice questions. Um, you, you just need to get uh, you just need to get the answers really quickly or use different techniques like elimination and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But I think the second section, you actually need to, to show some working or I don't know, uh, show some diagrams and stuff like that. And uh, you can just guess. So that was like the main difference. The most challenging aspect is definitely the timing for me because most of the questions, they don't give you questions that you couldn't do if you did A level. But it's just, do you remember the technique in time? And can you write, can you do the maths in time? It's just the time pressure. You need to, you need to be really quick. Right, okay. um, most people uh, didn't finish the entire paper. And I think that's probably fine. But yeah. yeah, you just need to try to do as many as you can. So the most challenging aspect was the time constraint. Um, but I believe that uh, I was very well prepared for that because I already knew that was going to be a problem. And when I say time constraint is also the fact that you need to decide what, um, what question to leave out. Um, and you need to be pre mentally prepared to actually skip some questions. And um, I know like a lot of people that are aiming for high grades are not used to that. But in the anger you have to do that and you have to just um, have that kind of technique. Like, as everyone else says, the most challenging aspect is timing. Um, and I think the only way you can improve your timing is to practice. So I, ha I had a book with yeah, 300 questions in, multiple choice questions. And every day I sat down and did 50 of them for six days before the, <laughs> the exam. And I increased my rate at which I could answer questions by like two or three times. Just, because, just through doing that. And I think it's like, I think anyone can do that if they just have the dedication. Yeah. I, I did more prep for the anger than I did for the interview, which is probably not a good thing to admit. But <laughs> I, think, I think the thing is, is once I did the prep for the anger and I got the interview offer, so to speak, I think I realized that I was at the point where like, 
I was prepared enough for the interview because by preparing for the anger, I knew that that was enough to get my maths brain into gear for the interviews. I didn't do sort of lots and lots of prep in one day. I just did a few questions from like the PAT exam. I didn't have any anger exams before mine. Yeah. I don't think so. I just did a few questions from the PAT exam or I would do multiple choice questions from like a physics textbook. And if, if you do it, I did it over like two, three weeks beforehand, just a little bit every day. And then the day before I practiced, there was a specimen. Mm. So I did the specimen and then yeah. I did. The basic things I did was just go over like mock exam, the past uh, paper questions that were available. But um, my, my sixth form actually was really good in the sense that quite a lot of people were applying to engineering. Mm -hmm. So they got uh, one of the teachers to give us some really good tips and they were like uh, time-saving tips. So um, it was stuff like how to quickly simplify um, like square roots mm -hmm. or just roots in general and um, you know just memorize because I believe you're not allowed a calculator. Yeah, right. So so you have to just have certain things just memorized. In terms of preparation, here's what I sort of recommend. Um, I think, so if you're doing this in sort of late October, I believe that's when I did it, um, then at least sort of, you know, maybe two or three months. You know, if your math is a bit rusty, that's not a problem, but, you know, make sure you understand your sort of content properly, your maths and physics, um, you know, sort of first year A-level, that sort of thing. Um, but don't use all the anger papers all at once because unfortunately there's a fairly limited supply of them. Um, one thing that's quite good is actually BMAT. So I think that's what the uh, medics use. So if you want to ignore the, the bio and um, chemistry questions, then the actual maths and physics questions sort of mimic some of the Section A content quite well. And I believe those go back to about 2003. I think there was only one past paper available, so I did that of course. Yeah. But there's also a website called I Want to Study Engineering, which, uh, well, the form of the questions isn't really, uh, you know, identical or even similar. They're a lot harder mm. instead of just, you know, being really easy questions that you need to do quickly. But it still helps you prepare, especially for the interview later. Actually, another thing that I did, I remember I printed out like some GCSE level, you know, those one or two markers. Mm -hmm. And I tried to like do them like really quickly. And yeah, it. It might, be, might not be hard, but it kind of speed it, sped up like the process.